and truly this is the day that the Lord has made. The Bible tells us to rejoice and be glad in it. You all, we're grateful to be back in the house of God again on this first Sunday in the month of May. God is good and he's greatly to be praised. Look, we know that the rain is going forth, but God is also raining down his blessings. And he's raining down mercies upon us. How do you know he's doing that? Because he woke you up this morning. How else do you know? Because he's allowed you to be in his presence to lift him up one more time. In spite of all our faults, in spite of all our frailties, we know that we serve a merciful God. And so we're grateful on this Sunday. Wherever you are here in the sanctuary or if you're viewing us virtually, we ask you to sing the songs of Zion with us. Dance, shout, give God glory for all that he's done. Because the word said that he is good and he's worthy to be praised. And so we're going to be led in praise and worship by our minister of music, Minister Shante Norton, and our praise team. We see you as we come forward.
Thank you. 
Father, we thank you that in you we live, move, and have our being. Our existence depends on you. Father, we thank you that while we may take for granted the ability to inhale and exhale, we thank you that we are able to do such things, oh God, while there are many people that are on ventilators, we thank you that those right now in our presence, oh God, and those that may be even watching it, we are able to do so, that our brain is able to reason and function at the capacity that you've allowed it to do so. Father, we thank you, oh God, that we have uh, the movement and some mobility in our hands and our feet, oh God, we thank you that we're able to smell the rain, see the rain, and hear the rain. Father, we thank you for all the goodness that you bestow upon us, oh God. We know that it is not because we've been good, because we've messed up since the last time we asked for forgiveness. Father, we ask that you will continue to show yourself mighty. Father, we thank you that your grace and your mercy continues to follow us all the days of our life. Father, we thank you that even when we try to run away from you, that you're already there, oh God. We thank you that there is no place that we can hide from you, oh God. Even when we may be experiencing depression, oh God, we can't hide from you in our lowest state. Father, even when we may be on the highest mountain of success, we can't hide in our success. Father, we thank you that you are everywhere. You are our omnipresent God. You are the God of the past, the God of the right now, and the God in the future. You are the God of eternity, oh God. Eternity past and in the future. Father, we thank you that you never change. You are not fickle and finite like our friends and our family members. Oh God, you never change. You are consistent. You love us with an everlasting love. You correct us when we need corrected and you hold us tight when we feel like we're lost and left out. Father, we thank you for your consistency. Father, we bless your name today. And we just come to you yielding our will to yours. Father, oftentimes we don't even know what to pray. We don't know how to pray sometimes. But Father, we thank you that your word reminds us that your Holy Spirit, and it makes intercession on our behalf with groans, oh God, that only you can interpret. Father, we thank you that oftentimes when all we can say, mm, God, or Lord have mercy, you know how to translate into, Lord, I need a job. Lord, I need my family to act right. Lord, I need my kids to get right. Father, we thank you that you are the great interpreter of all our prayers, our concerns, our situations, our frustrations. Father, we thank you. That you are omniscient. That means you know all things. There is no one greater than you, Father. No one stands beside you. No one can compare to you. Father, so we say thank you. While it may be a little gloomy outside, Father, we thank you that today is still the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad. And Father, we thank you that we're able to carry our own brother with us. The joy of our salvation. That no matter where we are, it may be crazy outside. But the joy of the Lord will continue to roll over in our soul. Father, we pray today, oh God. And we lift up our individual situations and circumstances. Because the reality is that someone has tried to handle things in their own power. We've tried to fix things with our own finite muscles, with our own intellect and, and, and ability. Father, we've tried to do it all on our own, thinking that we're going to make it better, thinking that we can change a person, thinking that we're able to even change ourselves. But we know, oh God, that you are the only one that can make the difference. So Father, we pray even right now that you will forgive us for not allowing you to guide our lives as we should have done, oh God. We ask us for, that you will forgive us, oh God, for not speaking to you before we made decisions. But we thought that because it seemed like a great idea that we should just go along with it. Father, we ask for your forgiveness. Father, we desire more of you. And some of us don't even realize that that's what we need. We are continuing to move out throughout this world trying to fill a void that only you can fill. In relationships and drugs and alcohol. Tattoos and gambling. Thinking the more degrees we have. That that will make the difference. Father forgive us. That we were not dependent 
born solely you and you alone. We thought because our relatives had the resources that that's all we needed to talk to. That's the only person that we needed to reach out to. But Father, we know that you own everything. You own a cow on a thousand hills. And because we are connected to you, we have access to all that you have. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Father, we thank you for your word that if we but seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that everything that we need will be added. Father, we thank you for your word. That if we would just speak your word to our situation, that things will change. We don't have to curse. We don't have to throw things. We don't have to throw a fit. But we would just speak your word. Because your word is alive and quick. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Oh God, we thank you that your word brings life to those dead situations, oh God. It can bring life. To those dry bones, those dead bones, oh God, we thank you. That those situations that we think that have no hope, then we can speak to it. And it shall rise and live according to your will. Father, today we ask that you will continue to be with those that are dealing with mental illnesses, oh God. Even as we are in our mental health awareness, oh God month and where we are seeking to better ourselves, the reality is that even in the church, persons are hurting and suffering from depression and low self-esteem and bipolar and post-traumatic stress disorders. They're dealing with things that are far beyond their control and they're dealing with it as best as they know how. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would rearrange our thoughts, our wills, and our emotions, that we will keep our eyes, our minds stayed on you. Father, you said in your word that if we we'll keep our eyes, our minds stayed on you, you will keep us in perfect, absolute peace, oh God. We thank you that we can take you at your word, that you guarantee it, that you sealed it with the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that you are faithful to accomplish everything. Father, we just bless your name. You are great. And we ground, we root ourselves in you today. Encourage that soul, oh God. That woman, that man, that boy, that girl that may be at their wits end right now. They don't know who to turn to. They're just saying, Lord, get me off this ride. I don't want to do this anymore. Father, won't you heal today? Won't you do it again, God? Father, I can testify that you know how to heal depression. That you can do it, and I know, God, if you did it for me before, I know that you can do it for someone else. Father, you are not a respectable person. You don't desire for your children to cry all night long. You don't desire for your children to have broken hearts or have confused minds, oh God. You don't desire for that. So, Father, right now, I pray that you would surround those persons with individuals that would love on them, that will hold them tight, won't judge them, but would help carry the burden with them to be a presence with them, God. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, oh God, that you will continue to be with our children who are in schools, oh God, who are continually to be impacted by their peers and teachers and trying to fit the status quo, trying to fit the image of what this world says they should look like. They have to be slim or they have to be thick. They have to be tall. They have to be short. They have to be light skin. They have to be dark skin. They have to have blonde hair. They have to have black hair. They have to have curly. They have to have straight. Father, won't you let them know that you are the standard and they are fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, oh God, that you will continue to lavish us with the love of Jesus Christ, that there will be no comparison. That we will feel it in our very being, that there will be no question of who you are and your presence in our lives. Father, we ask for open doors and opportunities today. 
Someone is tired of hearing that a more qualified applicant has been accepted. Father, won't you open up the door? That it won't matter their background. It won't matter their experience. It won't matter their education level. But it will be because of your faith that they will be able to say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be. Father, we thank you that you heard this prayer today. And we thank you for Jesus who is the only Christ. The one who came, lived, and died for us, but also rose for us. We thank you for salvation today. We thank you for the preached word through Pastor Reed. And every preacher that shall stand on today. We ask for a message that is preached with power and authority. That he would be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. That he would open up his mouth and then you would speak. It's in the name of Jesus Christ. That we pray and ask God. We thank you that you heard us. And whatever I fail to ask, I thank you that you are already on it. That you are already giving us the victory because we belong to you. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. Thank you.
person. Because the storms of life, they rage. The issues of life, they come pouring down like a, like a mystic rain. Ah, but our God is consistent in his character. If he promised it, that he'll never leave you nor forsake you, you have to know and believe that he's walking with you. You have to know that his presence is with you. That he'll walk with you until the end of time. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. So just as he's with me, he's with you. He's with each and every one of you. Hmm. Just sit there for a second. I know it's preaching to you. But think about those words.
spirit this morning, knowing that God is a covenant keeping God. In spite of the rain, that too had passed away. But God is consistent. We thank God for Minister Lord will lead us in worship and reminding us that our God keeps his covenant. Yep. Even when humanity break their oath and promises, we serve the God who would never break his. Yes, sir. And so you all are grateful that song resonated in my spirit. It should seem to be a, a, a friendly reminder to us yeah. that he's walking with you. And he'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's Bible. That's not just a song. That's the Bible. And so have confidence in that. That if his word said, if he told it to you, then he has to hold to his word. Hey, man, we thank God for all of you doing here who are viewing us virtually. We praise God for your presence in a place in this house of God on this Sunday morning. The first Sunday of the month of May, y'all, this, this year is vastly moving along. The elders, <laughs> the elders used to say, the older you get, time will keep moving. And now that I'm becoming an elder in life, I understand when they used to say, time waits for no man or woman. And so we're grateful. Uh, so last week, we embarked on this sermon series called Standing Strong, thinking this season we need to stand strong because life either is about to hit some of us like a bag of bricks or some of us will about to go through something. And so you need to stand strong. And so on last week, we talked on the subject, it's a struggle. Understanding that life is hard. That sometimes decisions will be made and it will feel uncomfortable for you. It will leave you in a whirlwind, but we've learned through Hagar that even in the midst of life being a struggle, that you're with the God that will carry you through your struggle. And so as we continue this series, Standing Strong, it's our second installment. We're going to go to the book of 2 Samuel, the 21st chapter. Then 2 Samuel. It's in Old Testament, y'all. Old Testament. Old Testament. 2 Samuel. 21st chapter. We'll look at verses 10 through 14. We ask everybody that's able-bodied to physically stand for the reading of God's word. You got it? Say, I got it. Do you bit more time? Oh, it's repeated. 2 Samuel 21, verses 10 through 14. And again, we thank God for those of you viewing us online. Look, share the message, like Encouragement Temple. After the service, subscribe to our YouTube page if you'd like to. All right, amen. Everybody got it? Say, I got it. Oh, no, that was weak. I guess everybody got it. <laughs> Amen. We'll, we read from New King James Version, and the word of the Lord reads as follows. Now, Rizpah, the daughter of Ai, took sackcloth and spread it for herself on the rock. From the beginning of harvest until the late rains poured on them from heaven. And she did not allow the birds of the air to rest on them by day, nor the beasts of the field by night. And David was told what Raspah, the daughter of Ai, the concubine of Saul, had done. Then David went and took the bones of Saul, the bones of Jonathan, his son, from the men of Jabesh Gilead, who had stolen them from the street of Bethshem, where the Philistines had hung them up, after the Philistines had struck down Saul at Gilboa. So he brought up the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, from there, and they gathered the bones of those who had been hanged. They buried the bones of Saul and Jonathan, his son, in the country of Benjamin and Zelah, in the tomb of Kish, his father. So they performed all that the king commanded, and after that, God heed, heeded the prayer for the land. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of his word. You all be seated in the presence of the Lord.
for these few moments. We like to preach and teach on the topic, navigating, navigating life's uncertainties. Navigating life's uncertainties. At this time in our scripture, David is well established as the king of all Israel. He had been king for some time. But at the beginning of chapter 21 of 2 Samuel, we're informed that there had been a famine in the land for three years. They've been in the drought. David, doing his best to live for God at that moment, didn't understand why there was a drought. Why there was a shortage in the land because you know that when there's a drought in that land, then livestock begins to die out, which means the financial or the economic system of the country begins to decrease. Unemployment was at an all-time high. And so God, David asked God, why are we going through this? Why are we living in the drought? Why? Is it that we have to suffer with no rain, knowing that our livestock is dying, our vegetation is not growing? God, why are we going through this? God, why am my pockets not growing? God, why am I not able to find a job that equates to the degree that I have? God, why is things happening in my life? And so God replies to David. The reason why you're going through this drought is because the children of Israel broke a covenant that was made with the people of Gilead. I'm sorry, the, Gib the Gibeonites. Right. You have to go back to Joshua, the seventh chapter, that Joshua made an oath with the Gibeonites. They tricked Joshua to making this oath. But, but whether they tricked him or not, you still had to hold on to the oath. And so the oath was that the Gibeonites would serve the children of Israel if Joshua didn't kill them. And Joshua said, you know what? I will agree to this covenant. For here and forever, you will not die. But when Saul became king, Saul did not heed to that covenant. He saw the Gibeonites as a threat as inferior, as people that should be amongst his people and he began to kill them all. And so God years later decides to punish the land for breaking the covenant. And so David understanding the severity of the situation, understanding that you don't break a covenant that you made before man and God, he goes to the Gibeonites because what David is concerned at this time is he wants to make everything right. And so David goes to the Gibeonites and he asks them, you know, how can we make this right? Can I pay you off and we can make this right? Can I give you land so everything can go well? Because all David is concerned is if I can make this covenant right with them, then God will open the floodgates and allow it to rain. But the Gibeonites understanding that Saul had took some of their lives. They come to King David and say, King David, no, we don't want your money. We don't want any more land. We want blood for blood. And so they request of David, David, we want seven sons of Saul. And so the Bible informs us that David finds seven sons of Saul. Now that puzzled me because if you go back to 2 Samuel, the seventh chapter, when the land was doing well, David asked the people, is there a descendant of sorrow that I can show kindness to? And if you go and read the seventh chapter, the people said that he had a lame son who was crippled by the name of Mephibosheth. And so now you go years later, and all of a sudden, you need to find seven descendants of Saul to make things right. Now, one had to ask themselves, why is it in chapter 7, it was hard to him to find seven descendants? But then when you go to chapter 21, he was able to find seven. Okay. 
Well, one may ask this, why? Well, I will tell you because the one in chapter 7 didn't pose a threat to the throne. But that's a different conversation because since Mephibosheth was lame, he physically couldn't overthrow David. And so he was inferior to David. But now, all of a sudden, David finds seven people that he couldn't find in chapter 7. He finds them in chapter 21. And the Bible says that he gave these individuals to the Gibeonites. Two of them being the sons of Rizpah. And five of them the sons of Michal. And the Bible says at that moment, the Gibeonites kill these seven sons. And so now these mothers who had nothing to do with the issue are now in a trance because these mothers at this particular time are elder women. And at that particular time, they needed their sons to take care of them. And now all of a sudden, these women who were going to live their golden lives with their sons happily ever after now is faced with uncertainty. What you mean uncertainty? Now my children are dead. I don't know how I'm going to stand. I'm not, I don't know how I'm going to survive financially. But besides the financial aspect, they have to deal with the mental anguish that their children died before them. Some of y'all, it may not be children dying before you, but a lot of us can attest to the fact that I've dealt with uncertain issues that happened in my life that I didn't expect to happen. Some of us have dealt with death of loved ones. Some of us have dealt with loss of jobs, loss of relationships, issues that we didn't account for hops and pops up in our lives. And so now Rizpa is sitting there, an innocent bystander in the situation, and she's in a trance because now I'm having to navigate life without my nest in. I have to navigate life without my children. I have to live day by day with only the memories of what I once had. Some people have to live with memories of their marriages. Memories of their children. Memories of what life was doing for them. Memories And so how do you push through the pain of uncertainty when it jumps in your face? How do you deal with the issues of life when it hits you like a ton of bricks? The thing that you thought would never happen in your life because in your mind you crossed every T, you dotted every I, you followed every rule book, you've done everything that they told you to do, you made straight A's in high school, you got the degree, you got the good job, you did everything right on paper, and all of a sudden things still hit the fan. How are we supposed to move? What should we do? As we look through the life of Rizpa, we know there's three things that we're able to do when life uncertainties hit us. When we have to push through the pain of life and the first thing that we should do and we should continue to always do is we should take on a posture of prayer. We should always take on a posture of prayer. Rizpa, as I stated, y'all, she was an innocent bystander. She was a concubine of Saul. And, and, and because of Saul's transgression, she had to suffer pain. And I want y'all to think about that for a minute. Because of Saul's transgression, she had to deal with issues. We have to be mindful of what we do and how we act. Because the reality is our actions affect more than just us. What do you mean? Well, if you lose your job, you do something to get fired that was uh, uncommonly a work getting fired, you're not only putting yourself in jeopardy, but you're putting everybody who's under your roof in jeopardy. What do you mean? Because now bills need to be paid. Food still has to be put on the table. You still got children you got to take care of. You still have a wife that has financial needs. You put more than yourself in danger. Saul, when he killed the Gibeonites, he didn't under, he didn't realize that years later that his descendants would have to pay for some of the things that he's done. And just because you don't 
get punished. Doesn't mean God is not going to punish those who are connected to you in the long run. You got to be careful how you move, how you act, what you going to do. The Bible says after Rizba sees her two sons dead, the Bible says she didn't know. The Bible didn't tell us she went to specs, right? She she didn't drown in her lip in her sorrow. She didn't go gambling. She didn't go clubbing. The Bible says that Rispa, once she realized that her children were dead, the Bible says that she took sackcloth. Now, some of y'all like sackcloth. What is sackcloth? We don't we don't live in that day and age. Well, sackcloth is associated with an individual with a spiritual understanding. What do you mean? When an individual bought off sackcloth, what they were saying at that moment is I'm having, I'm having an earnest, downright prayer with God. Yes. And so RISPA teaches us it doesn't matter how tragic the situation is. It doesn't matter how hard the issue may be. The first thing that I need to do is to go to God in prayer. I need to sit to myself spiritually because if I go do everything with the mindset that I have, then I, I, I'm going to act a certain kind of way. But if I go with the spirit of God and allow God to lead me, then the first thing I'm going to do when, when, when the, everything hit the fan and all hell break loose is I'm going to go to a position. I'm going to pray because at the end of the day, the only thing that can push me through this is the spirit of God because the liquor, it will give you a buzz, but it'll wear off. The weed will get you high, but it goes. If you go to the club, it's only momentary fix. If you go get a prostitute or have sex, it's only momentary. At the end of the day, you still have to face the issues that's before you. I get it. A lot of us, we don't want to deal with the issues that's faced before us because at that moment, we ain't in a space to deal with it. We're not in a space to maintain it. We're not in the space that we want to pray. But she had to pray because as I told y'all in the introduction, her, her financial source has been cut off. As I told y'all in the introduction, her, play, her, 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 her residency, her nest egg is no longer there. And so she had to pray and seek God. You got to pray and seek God for whatever answer that you need. Amen. Because Paul says it like this, bitch, right? Because in the time of issues, you got to understand that you wrestle not against flesh and blood. And we know we want to, we, when we go through something, we want to put it on a certain individual. But you got to understand it is not the person that's dealing with you. It is the spirit that's controlling the person that's dealing with everything. You cannot see, you cannot live a spiritual life in a, with a natural mindset. And so when you go through trials and tribulations when things hit the fan, you got to look at it as, okay, I'm, even though this person is doing, what's controlling this person? You need to speak to the spirit that's controlling it and not the person themselves. He said you wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? But you wrestle against principalities and powers and rulers of a dark net, of, 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 of a dark world, right? And so you got to understand that if I'm fighting a spiritual fight, then I need spiritual weapons to fight, right? And so that's why he says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God through the pulling down of strongholds. Because some things in life, you can't just handle it yourself. You can't handle some things in life on your own. If you're dealing with depression, you got to give it to God. If you're dealing with discouragement, you have to go to God in prayer. If you need a spiritual insight, you need to go to God. Don't go to Cleo or Paul Reader, because at the end of the day, if they can read their poems, then they'll be rich and not read your poem. All right. Watch this. But the Bible says something, right? It says that she was there from the beginning of the harvest until the late rain that came from heaven. And what they just telling us is that she didn't just say a quick prayer and leave it alone. She was fervent in her prayer. She was consistent in her prayer. And so if you want your situation to get better, if you want God to move, don't just pray one time and let it go. Okay, okay, come here, Evan. Uh, my, I, my, I love my son, right? Evan, he, he, he will bug you to death with some things, right? He'll ask you, Daddy, 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 can I, can I, yes, 
yesterday, he asked me, Daddy, Daddy, can I get a bagel? I said, no. Right? But what I love about Evan is, is I, well, as a parent, it got on my nerves. But, but sometimes the, 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 the application makes a lot of sense. 30 minutes later, he came back. He asked me the same question. I said, boy, get out of my face. Did I just tell you no? So he got out of my face for a while. But you know what he did? Amen. He came right back asking. And, the, and, and I said no again. But then the last time he asked, I said, Evan, go make your own bagel. What are you saying, Pastor? You just got to be consistent in your prayer. Just because you don't get the answer right then doesn't mean you're not going to get it. But you keep asking God in prayer. Because sooner or later, God is going to say, you know what? If it's a call to his will, he's going to answer your prayer. So just like Evan kept asking for that bagel, you keep asking God to move in your situation. You keep asking God to heal. You keep asking God to fix. You keep asking him to set free. Huh. And so you're navigating through life uncertainties. You got to take a posture of prayer. But secondly, this take the mature children of God. You got to stand in the gap of those who are hurting with you. You have to stand in the gap for those who are hurting with you. The Bible tells us that Rizpa protected the corpse. She protected the bones of those individuals who the Gibeonites killed. Now, you got to remember, as I stated earlier, only two of those sons was hers. The other five belonged to somebody else. And so one could ask themselves, well, where was the mother of the other five? Rizpa was there with the two, but Mikhail was not there. Well, one could, 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 could surmise in their spirit that Mikhail wasn't spiritually enough to handle what was going on. You say, Pastor, why the Bible doesn't say that, but the Bible gives us a lot of things that we can dissect in her life to make us feel that she may have had more on her head and she wasn't in a position that she could pray. What you mean? What did she have a lot of? Well, you have to understand Mikhail was David's wife. But then David, even though she was David's wife, her dad had given her to marry somebody else. And so once David became king, David grabbed, go back and gets Mikhail. Now on top of that, she learns that her dad and her brother is dead. And now you're telling her that she can't have a son with David because you got to remember the story. When David danced before the Lord, Mikhail told David, you look foolish. And God tells Mikhail that you're not going to have any children from him. So now look at her life. I've been bounced around from man to man. My husband marries me. I'm giving to another man. He gets me back. My dad and my brother is dead. I can't have children because a God had cursed me. And now the five sons that I had from somebody else are not living. And so now I can only imagine what's going through her head. If a person is going look, y'all looking at it crazy. Some of us, when we going through one thing, we don't want to serve God. If we got two things in our life, we don't want to pray. This woman is dealing with all of that. And she probably wasn't in the position of praying. She probably wasn't in the position to lift up her hands. She probably didn't was like, God, you forsaken me. I don't want to talk to you. Because the reality is, life can be so hard on some people that they turn their back on God because they figure that God had left them to die. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what I love about Rispa, Rispa said, you know what? Uh, even though the mother, she, she's not there, and I understand her pain, the Bible said Rispa stood there, not just with her two, but she stood there with the other five. And sometimes you need some people in your corner that's not just worried about their issues, but they're worried about your issues as well. Yes, they dealing with things in life, but they got enough time to put that issue to the side and pray for you and see what's going on. To have an ear and to say, you know what, I got you. Even though I'm going through stuff myself, I'm spiritual enough to know that you need me at that moment. That's why the Bible says, ye that are spiritual. You that are strong in your faith or the bad, the infirmities of the weak, of those who are not strong enough at that moment. If you got a relationship with God, you should know that God will bring you out. But you be there to let that person know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. That weeping may endure for night, but joy will come in the morning. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. 
Rispa. She was a concubine of Saul. She was an afterthought. But she had enough courage to pray and stand in the gap. We, we can't look down on people because we feel that, that, that naturally they're not in a position to pray. You can't look down on people because they don't, they don't have the best of job. They don't look the, like the way you think they should. They don't smell the best. No. If they got a relationship with God, they can have a relationship with God and they're working at McDonald's but they know how to get a prayer through. They can be working at, 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 at uh, Mr. Corwin but they got a relationship with God. Remove the natural lenses from us that think that people can't help us because of how they look and where they are. As long as they can get a prayer through, they can help me. I don't care if your subject and verbs agree or they don't. If you got a relationship with God, I need you to pray for me. I don't care if you have cold or nappy. If you got a relationship with God, please pray for me. I don't care if you from River Oaks or Homestead. If you got a relationship with God, stand in the gap for me. Pray for me. Hold me together. I need prayer. Amen. We're going to navigate through life uncertainties. Y'all, we got to take on the posture, posture of prayer. We got to stand in the gap for those who are hurting. And if we do that, we got to know that the Lord will reward you for your faithfulness. Yeah. The Lord will reward you for your faithfulness. The Bible says, Rispa protected those bones for the harvest. All right, for the harvest. Now, the average Bible reader will look at the harvest and just read that as a word and not understand what it means. Well, the harvest was not a, a four-day thing. Right. It was not a two-week thing. Uh -huh. It was not a six-week thing. Uh -huh. The harvest, the season of the harvest was from April to October. Okay. We have it. So now, get this, y'all. I want y'all to understand. From April to October, she protected those bones outside. So on Monday night, she protected those bones. On Tuesday, she protected those bones. On Wednesday, she protected. On Thursday, she protected. On Friday, she protected. On Saturday, on Sunday, then she did it again. Monday through Sunday, then she did it again. Monday through Sunday, she did it again. Monday through Sunday, she kept doing. Monday through Sunday. Why? What that's telling me is that every day while she was dealing with her grief, she did not leave her post. A lot of us, when we deal with our grief and our hardship, we want to leave our post. We want to stop doing what we're told to do. We, we want to stop walking in our calling. No, the Bible says even though Rizmo was grieving her sons, the Bible says she stayed there Monday through Sunday to make sure that the birds didn't come down and eat the flesh and that the beast of the night didn't eat. She resided there. She did not move for six months. She stayed there for six months. She prayed. For six months, she held on. For six months, every day of the week. We don't want to come to church for two hours one day a week. We don't want to come online. Now, I want y'all to process this because I believe in my spiritual imagination that every day wasn't a great day. I believe there was some rainy days. I believe there was some muddy days. I believe the temperature hit 110. I believe there was some uncomfortable days. But even in the midst of all of that, she did not move. She was there from the springtime and the summer. She dealt with the spring rain. She dealt with the summer heat. She dealt with the mud. But she continued to stay in that spot. We get a little rain and we get scared and fickle. It's like, oh no. Rest was stayed there seven days a week for six months. If my math is right, she was there for 180 something days. She did not leave her post. She did not allow her grief to stop her from coming. She did not allow her grief to stop her from, from being in a position that she belonged in. She lost all that she had, but she did not leave her post. Maybe we ain't made out of, some, out of our situation yet. 
and because we've lost our, we've left our post on the journey. We've left our post. We said, Lord, this is too much. The rain is coming down. I'm dealing with this, that, I gotta deal. Lord, I'm dealing with too much. Rizba could have said, Lord, my children are gone. I lost it all. Why do I need to stand in the gap for the, why do I got to stay here? Why do I have my sackcloth? Why am I praying to you? Why am I standing in position? Why am I holding up these other fires in the face? Why am I doing what I'm doing, God? But Rizba shows us, she shows us, and she, she's an example to us that in the midst of the hardest thing in your life, don't lose your faith, don't lose your position. Continue to pray, continue to be where you're supposed to be. Because if we're faithful over a few things, some of us may feel that it's best, like that's minor. If we're faithful over a few things, the Lord will make you ruler over many. And what I love is that not only did she didn't leave her post, but I believe in my spiritual imagination that she kept the sackcloth. She kept praying. She kept seeking God. She kept trusting God. After one month, she kept praying. She kept seeking. After month two, she kept praying. She kept seeking. The word says she was there through the whole harvest. Month three, she kept praying. She kept seeking and grieving. She kept praying, seeking, grieving, praying, seeking, grieving, praying, seeking, grieving, which means that life didn't get easy as it kept going, but she kept her trust. She kept believing, and that's the word for y'all that's in here. It's not, it may not get easier the next month. It may not get easier the month after that. It may not get easier. As a matter of fact, it might get harder because you're going to have to deal with the reality that you know what this is is really happening to me, but you got to trust God. Some of us lost some loved ones, you know, when it first happens, it, it's, it's a shock. But after about a week or two after the funeral, you realize it's a reality. Right. I believe Rizpa realized this is a reality. I'm not living in a dream. You go through this, you feel like it's a dream. Did I just lose my job? This don't feel real. Did, I, did this just happen to me? It doesn't feel real. And then you say, let me pinch myself to make sure it's real. But Rizba did not leave her spot. But then we are informed that sometime later, oh my God, this land blesses y'all, I'm almost done, that King David hears what this woman has been doing. David hears about what Rizba has been doing, which tells me that the praying, the fasting, the staying faithful is not going unnoticed. God is taking notice. If David is Evan, sit either sit back. If David was got word of what Rispo was doing, then God is seeking. God is seeing what you're doing. The Bible lets us know that he's, his eyes are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. And so God sees you. God watches you. He knows what you're going through. But also I believe that he's seeing if you're going to be consistent, if you're going to be faithful, if you're going to trust him, if you're going to believe that he's able to do the impossible. And how do you know he's able? Because your actions. What you mean? Because you're going to live with hope, hoping that things will change, hoping and believing that God is going to do just what he said he's going to do. Why? Because the Bible says the just shall live by faith. And so my faith believes that God is going to change my situation. I'm going to continue to pray. My faith believes that I'm not going to be in this situation for long. I'm just going to continue to believe. God, if you keep me in if I'm in this for four months, I'm going to keep moving. If I'm here for six months, I'm going to keep going. If I'm here for six years, God, I'm going to keep pushing because I know sooner or later, God, my situation will change. I don't know when, but I just got to believe that God will change my circumstance. Is there anybody here that's grateful that God can change your circumstance, but he moves according to his will and not our plan? Because our plan is when things hit the fan, God will move it right in. God, I just lost my job today. Tomorrow, God, heal it. God, I'm dealing with back pain. Touch it tomorrow, God, heal it. Now, I'm not saying God that can't move. He can move like that. Yeah. But if he doesn't move and he, he requires you to go through some things to show you that you're stronger than what you are, to show you that he can hold you in the midst of the struggle, 
then you just got to keep moving like Rex, but she kept moving. Again, y'all got to remember, everything, she lost it all. But she stayed firm. And then the Bible says, after David had got wind of what happened, the Bible says that David does something for Rizpa. He gets the bones of Saul and Jonathan. He gets the bones of those who have died. And, he's, and, and instead of the bones being ate up by beasts, because she wanted to have a proper burial, the Bible says six months later, Y'all, that David gets word and they get a proper burial and they bury where they're supposed to go. What you mean? If you stand on the post long enough, God will change your circumstance. God would allow you to see the grass that's greener on the other side. God would allow your muddy roads to get dry. God would allow your grass to grow. God will allow some things to shift in your life. God will send you a blessing. God will heal your body. God will touch your dis depressed mind. God will trust that spouse. God will trust the children. God will trust that job. God will touch your mind. But you got to endure it. You got to take, stay consistent. You got to stay in a position of prayer. You got to stay in your position of purpose. Yeah. And watch this, y'all. Watch this. Because remember, I told y'all in the beginning that the country was going through a famine. The Bible says, watch this. The famine didn't stop when the Gibeonites got revenge. Oh, this is about to open your eyes. The famine didn't stop until David did right by Rizpa and the bones. Oh, y'all missing right there, verse 14. It says, they buried the bones of Saul and Jonathan, his son, in the country of Benjamin and Zalah, in the tomb of Kish, his father. Since so they performed all that the king commanded. And after that, oh, and after that, that is right now, verse 14. And after that, God heeded to the prayer of the land. Meaning that you got to go through the process before things can change for everybody. Watch this, y'all. By David, and I'm done, by David getting wind of what Rizpa was doing, Rizpa prayer was answered because she didn't have to no longer stay over the bone. She didn't no longer have to stay in a position because her prayer had been answered. But on top of that, God answered David's prayer because David answered somebody else's prayer. Oh, this is about the blessing. Sometimes you don't get your blessing until you bless somebody else. Sometimes you wonder why, Lord, why am I standing sometimes? It's probably because you're so consumed with your own issue that you forget to bless somebody else. You come here, Job. The Bible says that Job, once he prayed for his friends, that his situation changed. Sometimes you got to get out of yourself and pray for somebody else. Pray for healing for that person. Pray that God's delivering them. And in the midst of praying for them, God will do it for you. So navigate through life uncertainties, y'all. God, you got to always pray, pray without ceasing. The Bible says men ought to always pray. He didn't say men ought to always sing. He didn't say men ought to always shout. No, he said men ought to always pray. Why should we always pray? Because prayer is having a conversation with God. God would never hear you if you never talk to Him. He don't know your issues, what your honest desires are, unless you have a conversation. Yes, he knows all things, but God wants to know how bad do you want it. Have a conversation with the Father. Have a consistent conversation. Don't come talking to him one time and don't talk to him no more. No, have a constant communication with him. Have a relationship. Be intimate with him. And be real with God. I'm sick of this mess. Jesus. But God, I need you to move. Right. God, I don't understand it. But I need you to make a way. God, I need you to heal. God, but when you pray, you got to know how to pray. Because a lot of us, when we pray, all we say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, change my situation. God, move for me. God, I need you to do this. We always begging. But we never reverence him in our prayer. The 
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lie. Our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Before you pray, you thank God for him being who he is. Not for what he's done for you. God, thank you for just being God all along. God, thank you for being a burden bearer. God, thank you for just being the creator. God, I thank you just for who you are. You omniscient, God, which means you know all, God. You omnipresent. You everywhere. Stand in the gap for others who's hurting with you. Because the truth of the matter is, yes, you're going through, but you're not the only one going through something. You might not be going through the same thing. But please believe me, somebody else is going through something. And somebody's situation may be worse than yours. You lost the job. Well, at least you got a spouse to hold you together. Somebody lost the job and they're there by themselves. You lost the child, but you got three others. Somebody lost the child and didn't have no other ones. Be, a, be willing enough to say, I'm going to put my stuff to the side. If you're a child of God, if you still feel with the Spirit of God, you should be strong enough to be able to put yourself to the side and trust God to deal with yours and lift that person up. Stand in the gap for them. Because you have a relationship. I trust God with my stuff. We're going to pray that you make it through. I got to hear to listen to you. What's going on in your life? And if we continue to be consistent, God will reward us with our faithfulness. Risk was paid on her post through the rain, through the pain, through the sunshine, through the rain. She didn't care that people said you got the same clothes on. She didn't care that, that she was muddy, to up. She didn't care that it left her looking a hot mess. She didn't care. Don't care about what, how you, what people think you're going to look like when you come into church. You come in here to praise and worship God. You have an, it's, it's your relationship with God. She had sackcloth. She was in a position of prayer. She was in a position of spirituality. She was that this talk with God. In her consistency, her prayer was answered. In her faithfulness, her prayer was answered. My word to y'all. Be faithful and committed to what you have to do. In doing so, according to his will, he will reward you for your faithfulness. Navigate through life issues. Stand strong because we have what we need to navigate through these issues. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We thank you, Father, because we know uncertainties happen in life. We know issues of life comes like a flood at times. Thank God some of us may have to deal with plenty. But God, we thank you for your word through risk, but God, reminding us that when uncertainties fall in our life, that God, we we bring them to you in prayer. That we seek you. We ask you for your guidance. We ask you for your strength. And that we're strong enough, God, that we stand in the gap for others, even though sometimes our situation may not change. for those who faith may not be as strong as ours. That we lift them up in prayer. That we believe that you'll work a miracle in that lives. Help us to stand on our post just like risk for God. If you call us for a purpose, we stand on our purpose. And believe in God that you are well rewarded to them 
who diligently seek you. You're a reward of those, God, who remain consistent and faithful. Help us right now. And Father, we bless you. We thank you right now. In Jesus' name, we say amen and praise God. Maybe there's somebody that's here, viewers online, that's dealing with the uncertainties of life. Which way to turn? Because it caught you by surprise. If that's you, if you're online, we ask you to leave us a comment. If you're here, we just ask you just to raise your hand.
before you go grab your grape juice or your whatever juice is going to be a representation or a symbolic representation of the blood before you go grab your bread that you just take this moment to center yourself and reflect and ask for forgiveness in this moment knowing that you can't fix it but you depend on the Lord so we ask you just take this moment even as I pray for us over us collectively Lord God how we love you and we thank you for this opportunity and we find ourselves again in what we call the believer's table. And we do it in obedience to what you have requested and required of us. You didn't ask us to remember anything else, but you said, remember that I died for you. So Father, we thank you for this opportunity to reflect. And right now, there are persons under the sound of my voice, both virtually and in person, Father, that have uh, gone against, gone contrary to your will, your way, your voice your word. Father, so we ask that you will forgive us for our sins, whatever it may be. Somebody may not even profess openly what it is, but you know those secret things that we do with that nobody else knows about. So Father, we ask for the forgiveness of sin today, and we thank you that we have it because, have it, meaning forgiveness, because we have come to you in faith believing and trusting in the blood of Jesus Christ that reaches to the highest valley and goes to the lowest valley. Father, we thank you for the strength that it provides us from day to day. Lord, we love you and we thank you even right now. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. Again, we want you to go ahead and take this time, even as the melody is being played, we want you to uh, think uh, soberly about what this means for you. Uh, go ahead for our virtual viewers grab you something to drink that is a proper representation of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grab you a bread uh, that will represent the body. We ask for those of you that have not openly professed that you do not take of this these elements. These are sacred elements. The Bible says when you eat and drink without a sober mindset, without truly knowing its representation, you eat and drink damnation your own soul. So we ask that if you are not a believer, that you do not take it even virtually. If you're at home and your children have not professed, we ask that you do not give this to them. Because again, this is the believer's table.
Thank you, Jesus Christ, for your death. Yes. Father, we thank you that you thought we were worth dying for, that you gave it all up just for us. Father, we pray that even as we are reflective in this moment and even in the days to come, that we will remember that it is no one but you who have done this great thing for us. Father, we thank you that you call us friend. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in virtual viewers. You can be seated in the place where you are. We're going to sell. I was going to sing it. Nah, I'm not going to sing anything, but I'm going to listen to the melody of I Know It Was the Blood. This is a testimony song. Baby. Directly here to the 
um, to the church where you can reach out and leave us a message, DM, send us an email, whatever you got to have to do if you want to partner with us in this back to school drive so that we can be a blessing as we have been every year, I believe. For six years, we've been able to give out back to school uh, supplies to the community with no cost, free of cost to the community. And so we thank God for that. And uh, now I want to take this opportunity to also recognize any birthdays that may happen or um, marriages, anniversaries that have happened uh, in the month of May. Okay, birthdays. Robin. Okay, Robin. Which day again? Give me one minute again. Oh, 23rd. <laughs> I don't know. I just know he was born in this month. Uh, the 23rd. Happy birthday, Robbie. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries that have uh, that are happening? Well, we're not that close this year. We probably recognize it a little bit later on. We know that we're nearing this uh, the school year, um, so we do know there may be persons that are preparing to commit, walk across the stage. Uh, we will highlight that a little bit more later on in the month of May as we near the end of the school year. Uh, we thank God and hope that everyone has a successful examination for these standardized testings. Uh, that have occurred over these last two weeks for our youth and even our high schoolers. We hope that you all had a successful uh, time in that. I believe that is it. Uh, we do have given opportunities that are available for each and every one of you. We know that uh, given is an act of worship. Thank you. Uh, hallelujah to the person that celebrate the opportunity to give. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, Lord bless you real good. Um, giving is an act of worship. It's not just opening up your mouth and saying, thank you, Jesus, or laying down before me. He says, look, don't come before me with that that costs you absolutely nothing. Go ahead and give him your very best, not just uh, in, in word, not just in your thoughts, but in your deeds and your actions. Show me how much you love me. You know, and so he asked that you bring both the tithe and the offering. The tithe is the first 10% of your increase. He asked that you would give so digitally or in person. Uh, we want you to give uh, 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 with a smile, not looking, as, as Pastor Reed was saying, like a little bell, uh, looking ugly. In fact, show all them teeth, no matter what colors they are. Just go ahead and show them and smile. Uh, y'all should smile, y'all, when y'all ready to leave. Um, we want y'all to be happy as you give unto the Lord. We're going to bless the name of our God and pray unto him, and even as you get your offense ready. Lord God, we thank you. For the opportunity to give, Father, we know that clearly there's some that don't have it, and so we ask that you would bless them anyway. Just remind them that you're in full control, God. I pray that you would be with those and bless the hands that do have it and that shall give freely, Father, that you would restore back to them that no one will go lacking because they chose to partner with you, God. We thank you so much in the name of Jesus Christ that you've allowed us to partner with you as we help to build your kingdom even here on earth. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask you, all. amen and amen. All right, I believe that is all the announcements. Uh, for those of you that are given digitally, just a reminder to utilize the PayPal or send a Gazelle, Gazelle link or um, uh, access is made available through uh, the email address, encouragementtemple at gmail.com. That goes directly to the church. Um, and so we hope that you would take part in that. The information is also on the screen. I want to remind you all of what encouragement to those on that. Right, don't use that. that. That information is not on, this, on that stream, so they should know not to use that. Um, but we want to remind you of what Encouragement Temple is all about. Encouragement Temple is the place where Christ is edified through our worship and our witness, where believers are empowered through the preached gospel and discipleship, and where the community is enlightened on God's saving grace to all. I'm going to turn you back into the hands of Pastor Reed. He's going to provide the blessing and the benediction. Amen. Let us open ourselves to those announcements a little bit. We encourage y'all to to give, um, just understand that we're we're standing on the basis of you guys giving, and so we thank God that you all who give, that you continue to give, those who have not, start giving, those who can't, we pray for God to open up that window. Look, y'all, it started raining, but look how God does that. This morning it was raining, but now if you look outside, the sun is trying to come out. And so for those you all, just look at that as a situation, just as God is able to change the weather, that instance, God can change your situation. Amen. There's no more announcements. Everybody understand as we dismiss. 
Amen. Let us stand to the to the King Eternal, yes. Immortal, yes. Invisible, to the only wise God. Be glory, honor, dominion, and power. Father, as we leave this place, Father, we ask you, God, to protect us. God, we thank you, God, for showing us your son, God, letting us, letting us know and reminding us, God, that even though it may rain, God, but sooner or later the rain has to go and your son will appear. And so, God, whoever is dealing with the rain in their lives right now, God, let this be a reminder to them. And, Father, we ask you, God, to be with us as we leave this place, God. Protect us as we travel over the wet roads, God. Keep us safe from harm, accidents, and danger. And, Father, we ask you to allow us to get to our parents' homes and destinations safe, God. And allow them to be steady. Well, it was how we left the safe, sound, and in one piece. And, Father, we thank you right now. And, Father, we ask you to bring us back to the house of God virtually for Bible study this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Until then, we want you all to be encouraged. You're dismissed.